The most expensive riff, the easiest paycheck in guitar history, and an unexpected guitar teacher. This and more in today's Shred Trivia. Here we go. Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? I'm Justin Hombach, back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video. A little guitar and shred trivia that I have prepared and I'm thinking about doing this maybe like monthly, giving you some really fun insights and really fun trivias about guitar playing like this cat here is called Ingvi. I love those kind of fun facts. They are perfect to break the ice on every party because everyone wants to talk about our favorite hobby ever, shred guitar, even if they never had played guitar in their life. But you can guarantee also these people will love shred guitar. So let's start with the first fun fact. A little question. What has Buckethead to do with the Lord of the Rings? Well, as we all might know, Buckethead has released tons of studio records, 435 in total. Oh my god. But four of these records worth with none other than Strider, the heir of the Sildur, king of Arnor and Gondor. I'm talking about none other than Aragorn II, son of Arathorn. This is no mere ranger. He is Aragorn, son of Arathorn. You owe him your allegiance. Of course, I'm talking about the actor of Aragorn, Viggo Mortensen. From the late 90s till the mid 2000s, they've released four rather obscure collaborations between one sword fighting master and one guitar fighting master. I don't know if it's worth to check out these records, but I was kind of confused and slightly amused by this fact about our my favorite Kentucky Fried Chicken Shred God. But what you definitely might know is that Buckethead, aka Brian Patrick Carroll, used to be the student of Shred God Paul Gilbert in the early 90s. Now, this is something that here and there sometimes happened that a well established guitar legend is going to be the teacher of a future shred or guitar god. Like, for example, Joe Satriani, Kirk Hammett. Justin Hombach, you the subscriber, because you are the next generation of Shred Gods by following and subscribing to this YouTube channel. No, but did you know that Tom Morello, the guitar player of Rage Against the Machine, used to have a guitar teacher which has a status or is well known as the Godfather of Shred? Yes, I'm talking about none other than Michelangelo Badio. In the early 90s, he gave some lessons to Tom Morello and he even quotes in a magazine that Tom Morello was kind of a really good and talented student, having a really good technique and really good knowledge about scales and music theory and all this kind of stuff. Sadly, I believe we won't see much sweep-picked arpeggios and speed-picking licks in the fight against the system and the music of Rage Against the Machine, but rather the obscure kind of sound that he is legendary doing, but well. Okay, that's this kind of style. I would love to see some four neck guitar shredding in the next Rage Against the Machine record, but well, but in the end, I only hope that Michelangelo Badio has received a really good paycheck and enough money by giving guitar lessons to this young and inspiring guitar rebel. Well, but what would you think? Who is one of the persons who got the easiest paycheck in guitar history? None other than the legendary guitar wizard from Queen. Brian May himself. In 1994, a video game called Rise of the Robots was released, and the developer actually asked Brian May to compose a full soundtrack for this game. But in the end, and I don't know why, Brian had made it quite easy for him, and he just submitted two tracks from the solo record that he released around that time called Back to the Light the tracks The Dark and Resurrection. <laughs> So the company was advertising the game Rise of the Robots not only with the astonishing graphics and the extremely good gameplay, 
which it does not had, but neither did it had the soundtrack of Brian May that they also advertised this video game with a lot. So some of the buyers who might think like, okay, maybe the game is not the best for the time. Maybe there are better fighting games around that time, like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and all these great classics. But well, at least I have a soundtrack fully composed by Brian May from Green. But in the end, they only got two tracks from his already released solo record. Maybe the developer of the game confused Brian May, the guitar player from Green, with Brian May, an actually film composer who wrote music for movies like Mad Max 2. But speaking of movies, what do you think is the most expensive riff that you can get for your next Hollywood blockbuster movie? Is it Smoke on the Water? No. Something from Metallica? No. Something from Little Ingvi here? Well, sadly also no. But the next time when you hear this riff in a movie... You can definitely guarantee that a lot from the budget has went into that riff because you have to pay minimum half a million dollars to have the right and the license to play Thunderstruck in your movie. Which makes this riff officially the most expensive riff ever. Man, I hope someday I'm going to write a riff like that. Well, probably not with my obscure shredding things here on my YouTube channel, but maybe you will after you've subscribed to this channel and after you've learned more from my videos. So much for this little trivia video. If you have some interesting facts and some interesting trivia, so we got guitar or maybe about my good buddy Ingvi here, then let me know in the comments and I hope you liked this little video. I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. Cheers and stay progress and say goodbye to Ingvi. See you.